Hi, I'm William Hyatt, Professor of Medicine at the University of Colorado and President of the Colorado Prevention Center. This video will provide you information on the use of the ankle brachial index in the diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease along with use of the history and physical examination. Peripheral arterial disease is a common manifestation of atherosclerosis in this country affecting 8 to 10 million Americans. This disease, though quite prevalent, is under-recognized and undertreated, and therefore these patients suffer a high risk of cardiovascular events, heart attack, stroke, and death. In addition, the disease is responsible for a significant amount of disability. So detection of peripheral arterial disease is critically important because there are several well-established therapies that we use to reduce this risk and treat the disability. The first step is a proper diagnosis, and we know that the history of intermittent claudication and the abnormal pulse finding on physical examination is insufficiently accurate to make a diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease. So we have turned to the ankle brachial index, which is the non-invasive gold standard for the diagnosis. This video will provide you information how to do that uh, in your overall assessment of these patients. This is brought to you by the Vascular Disease Foundation, which is a national organization designed to improve awareness of peripheral arterial diseases uh, provide appropriate patient and physician education with an overall goal to reduce the disease burden in the country. Thank you for your attention. The ABI examination is a relatively quick exam comparing the systolic pressures in the arm and the ankle. It can be done in the office using a simple handheld ultrasound Doppler and standard blood pressure cuffs. To prepare the patient for the test, have them remove their shoes and socks and lie quietly on the examination table for a few minutes in a warm examination room. Before starting the measurements, arrange your equipment in a convenient position and make yourself comfortable to avoid awkward positioning. To take the arm pressure, wrap the cuff snugly around the arm. Place the probe over the brachial artery. Using only light pressure, slowly move it around until blood flow sounds are clearly heard. Steady your hand on the patient or the table and keep your eye on the probe hand during inflation and deflation of the cuff to minimize movement and to make sure the probe doesn't slip off the vessel. Inflate the cuff approximately 20 millimeters above the point where the sounds disappear and then slowly, about 2 millimeters per second, deflate the cuff until the sounds reappear. Record this pressure and deflate the cuff to zero. Now repeat the process for the other arm. The ankle pressures are obtained by wrapping the cuff snugly around the ankle and placing the Doppler probe over the posterior tibial artery on the inside of the ankle. Using the same protocol as you did on the arm, inflate the cuff until the Doppler sounds disappear, then slowly deflate until the sounds are heard again. Record that pressure and deflate to zero. Repeat for the other leg. On some patients, it may be easier or necessary to use the dorsalis pedis artery on top of the foot. The ABI is now calculated for each leg. Using a calculator, divide the ankle pressure by the higher of the two arm pressures. Instead of a calculator, you can also use an ABI chart to determine the ABI. Now that you've learned how to obtain the ankle brachial index, we'd like to help you with its interpretation. Typical normal values range from 0 0.90 to 1.30. Above 1.30 suggests that the vessels in the ankle are not compressible. This can be seen in diabetes and end-stage renal disease. In this situation with these high ABI values, please send your patient to a vascular laboratory for a proper diagnosis using other tests. Your threshold for a peripheral arterial disease is an ABI less than 0 0.90. At that values, we have a high degree of certainty that these patients have peripheral arterial disease. Please then initiate secondary prevention therapies at that level and consider these patients high risk. Finally, the lower the ABI, the more the severe the hemodynamic disease. So we typically will see patients become more severely symptomatic at levels below 0.50.